Now, Sony has been refining its smartphones for years, of course, without any huge jumps in technology from generation to generation, but each one is better than the last. And most importantly, they don't drop features along the way, unlike some other Android manufacturers, also starting with the letter S. Well, they tried following the herd with the original Xperia 5 by dropping the 3.5mm audio jack, but then <laughs> there was a righteous outcry from people like me. They only went and brought it back for the Xperia 5 Mark II. Now, that's what I call listening to users. And the Xperia 5 Mark III here takes the Mark II and adds a slightly faster chipset, Snapdragon Treble 8, the fancy dual focal length periscope optics from the Xperia 1 Mark III, see Phone Show 427, and more on the cameras and software in a moment. 500 milliamp hours more battery at 4,500. So the battery life is excellent. Faster wired charging, 30 watts from the previous 21 watts. Okay, so if you already own the Mark II from 2020, then this isn't really a must have upgrade, but from the original or indeed from any other Android phone without all the Sony bells and whistles, this is a truly desirable device. But Android basics out the way first. It's Android 11 out of the box with Android 12 and 13 promised as upgrades and support into 2024. The treble 8 chip just flies and Sony's skin over Android is very light. And for most purposes, you can consider this an upgraded Google Pixel. Just watch out for almost six gigabytes of Sony game upgrades in the Play Store when you start this up, when you set it up from scratch. Worth cancelling and disabling the relevant couple of titles, Call of Duty and Asphalt 9 in settings, especially if you're doing the setup on cellular data. The screen is a 21 by 9 120 hertz AMOLED panel. That's pretty good. Not quite as clear outdoors as top end Samsung's or indeed iPhones with uh, <coughs> Samsung screens, but eminently good enough even when snapping in the sun, thanks to the clear and obvious new Photo Pro apps basic mode UI. The flat glass front and back is incredibly slippery, oleophobic to the max. It does resist fingerprints. It also resists friction with the world. So the Xperia 5, I'm holding this quite tightly between finger and thumb and it's still slipping through. The Xperia 5 III will slide off any desk or table every single time. I'm trying to hold it and I cannot. So you'll want a case. I have a lovely Spigen one here that fits the bill with reinforced corners, reinforced everything, does the job, perfect. But multimedia playback is where the Sony Xperia 5 range shines. Watching video streams, Netflix, YouTube, playing local videos is just such a pleasure. Video is enhanced, colors and brightness pumped up when needed, and the front-facing stereo speakers with large haptic motor driving dynamic vibration to fill in the bottom end frequencies, all make sure that cinematic media is, for once, cinematic. This is full volume. Jimi Hendrix cover by the Classic Rock Show. I think it's starting to enjoy that far too much. Then when you want music in addition to the usual Bluetooth 5.2 here with Aptex HD and Sony's LDAC options, there's a 3.5mm jack with incredibly high quality output into all the wired headphones I tested. Maybe not as loud as the older LG quad DAC phones, but it's clear and with excellent dynamic range. Down the right hand side is a fingerprint sensor built into the power button. This is excellent as usual. One press and you're in. 100% reliable. This has been a Sony trademark in recent years. And a Google Assistant button. Buttons everywhere. Very handy and reminiscent of press and hold for Siri on the iPhone or even on some other Android phones. It's an option for Pixels as well, I believe. Press and hold. What's the weather going to do today? It'll be mostly sunny with a high of 21 and a low of 11. Yes, thank you. Currently it's... Shut up, shut up. But imaging is perhaps the biggest differentiator from last year's Mark II in that there's this rather odd two-step periscope telephoto system, 2.9 times and 4.4 times zoom. See all the samples here in this video. You can only jump between them, so zoom it, say, 3.4 times or 3.8 times is all digital on top of the 2.9 times telephoto. You kind of get used to it. And it's this lower zoom factor that everything's optimised for, so you end up with similar results to last year's simpler three times telephoto on the Mark II. But the 4.4 times zoom stop does work. Again, see the samples here. 
Now, some shots aren't quite as crisp as I'd like, but then again, photos with the main sensor on the Mark III are too heavily enhanced, I'd argue. This is the first software, the first firmware for this device. And my gut feel is that Sony will improve things with updates just as they did last year with the Mark II. Both main and periscope cameras have Zeiss optics, T-star multi-layer coatings and OIS, plus there's a decent ultra-wide camera again samples here with focusing, though it can't handle macro shots like the new iPhone 13 ultra-wide. I did try. Video. So test a video here on the Xperia 5 Mark III. Stabilisation isn't great and you do have to make a creative decision to change lenses. So that's switching to 2.9 times telephoto. Uh, but you can't zoom continuously from one lens to the other. But it's fine, it's a creative thing. And now this is at 4.4 times telephoto. You can get fairly close. These people in this building is around uh, 70 metres away. Shame about the stabilisation though. Maybe that can be fixed in updates. So yes, updates, Sony updates. Updates for less kludged main in 4.4 times shots. Updates for better stabilisation in video capture. So we'll see what you can do. But things are definitely promising. Most major brand Android flagships are a bit of an adventure these days in terms of how the software evolves month by month. I can't say I noticed the increase in charging speed, but I had no complaints on this or the battery front. I did miss Qi charging again, and its omission is somewhat unforgivable on what is now a £900 smartphone, at least at RRP in the UK. I'm talking of price, it's too high. In the same way as most Apple prices are too high, and for the same reason, Sony is playing the high price, high margin game and selling to the Sony faithful. Those who love all things Sony, who genuinely believe that they are masters of media, photography and audio. Now, I'm not quite in that enthusiast camp, but I'm impressed overall by the Xperia 5 Mark III, enough to want to be a believer. Sony is an aspirational brand and it's very cool to use one of their finest smartphones yet, even if it's not perfect yet.